Hello everyone. Uh, in this class, we are going to see about airway examination, and uh, this will be a continuation class of airway anatomy. But I suggest you re you see the class on laryngoscopy before coming to this class, because if you understand how to do a laryngoscopy, airway examination will be much more easier for you. Okay, so we seen this slide in the previous class itself. That I put the slide once again because I want you to understand the importance of airway. that even if you fail to maintain the airway for a few minutes or even seconds you may the patient may end up in a brain damage or even death so to properly understand an airway and to properly secure an airway you need to do airway examination like most of the time airway airway, airway will be easy that is that means you will be easily intubating the patient once the patient has been anesthetized but sometimes the airway could be difficult so we have a set of airway examinations which will help us understand what is difficult airway and which patient has difficult airway so that we can prepare accordingly uh, it is said in difficult airway card that we need to have at least four plans that is plan a plan b plan c and plan d so if plan a fails you have to move to plan b and so on and so forth until you have plan d so in a difficult airway situations you need to have backup plans so that is why you need, you have to examine the airway so regarding neat pg aspect uh, each year there has been at least one or two questions uh, from airway and uh, they have been repeatedly asking about examination points in difficult airway so we'll see those things in this slide so how do you define a difficult airway so difficult airway is nothing but a conventionally trained anesthetist who takes more than 3 attempts or more than 10 minutes to intubate a patient that airway is called as difficult airway so a conventionally trained anesthetist uh, so before that you need to uh, know what is a intubation attempt so here we say three attempts so what is an intubation attempt is uh, we uh, once they put the scope in and uh, they they try to intubate they are not able to do it they take out the scope that is called as one intubation attempt okay so so what i mean by uh, laryngoscopy is uh, uh, this is a la normal laryngoscope so what we do is uh, we put the scope in and this tip should be inside the valvula and uh, we try to intubate the patient and we take out the scope so this is one intubation attempt so now uh, regarding the other examinations uh, so first thing we need to do is uh, we need to assess this mouth opening so whether the patient is able to open the mouth normally Uh, so that can be assessed by this parameter that is inter incisor distance between the upper incisor and the lower incisor the normal distance should be more than 4 cm or otherwise two fingers so what we used to do is we ask the patient themselves to take their two finger and insert it into their mouth like this so if they are able to do that then that means their temporomandibular joint is normally functioning our temporomandibular joint is a ball and socket joint that is the joint which involves in mouth opening so sometimes the patient may have temporomandibular ankylosis so the the joint will become fused and they won't be able to open the mouth so if you're not even able to open the mouth then how will you introduce the scope inside so that becomes a difficult airway so the normal thing is inter incisor distance is more than 2 uh, more than 4 cm or two fingers or each finger is considered as 2 uh, cm in breadth and uh, that is the normal inter incisor distance and the second thing is malambetti score which is uh, which is introduced by sheshagri malambetti uh, we'll see this malambetti uh, malambetti score in next slide it is very important for exam point of view and the next thing is submandibular space so from the uh, laryngoscopy class you would have uh, remember that we need to put the scope in we need to keep this tip inside we need to keep this tip inside the valvula and we have to lift it so you have to lift the tongue and push the tongue to the submandibular space so that the space, uh, so that the you will be able to see the glottis so that to assess whether we could do that whether we could do the lifting and pushing the tongue into the submandibular space we need to assess the submandibular space adequacy so that is assessed by two things one is thyromental distance another one is hyomental distance so it is nothing but uh, you you measure the distance from the thyroid cartilage to the manubrium uh, so the to the uh, mentum that is uh, in the in the midpoint of the chin so it should be more than 6.5 cm or three finger breadth so the you have to take your finger and keep it like this so if it's more than three finger then that means the thyromental distance is adequate and the submandibular space is adequate for pushing the tongue then uh, the second thing is hyomental distance so hyomental distance is we need to measure the distance between hyoid bone and mentum then it should be more than 4 cm 
Now coming on to the final thing, neck movement. So neck movement is nothing but whether the patient is able to extend and flex the neck and normally. So you can ask the patient to extend their neck as much as possible and flex their neck as much as possible like this. Extension and flexion. So extension you have to see whether the patient is able to extend without any difficulty. Normally extension is uh, the normal intubating. This is this we do because we want to know whether the, we can put the patient on intubating position. So in the previous class you would have seen that the intubating position is nothing but morning sniffing position. And uh, the whether we will be able to put the patient on morning sniffing position that is what we are assessing because normal intubating position if the patient is able to uh, if you are able to put the patient on normal intubation position that itself will make the intubation much more easier than intubating in a difficult uh, positioning so one is an extension another one is flexion so in flexion the tip of the manubrium uh, so, sorry tip of the mentum should touch the manubrium sternum the one other method for assessing the neck movement is uh, sternomental distance. So this what you do is you have to measure the distance from the sternum to the manubrium to the mentum and it should be more than 12.5 cm. What you have to do is you have to ask the patient to close their mouth and extend like this. And you have to measure the distance between these two points and that is uh, sternomental distance. So now that you are familiar with uh, these four distances and uh, I'm sorry, these five distances, uh, that means the uh, initial airway examination is over. Now Malambati score. So uh, Malambati score, the examiners are very fond of this question. It's been asked repeatedly in many uh, previous MC, previous need PG examinations. So it is not, uh, nothing but it measures the mouth opening in simple definitions. Uh, to be exact, the, uh, it measures the ratio of size of the tongue in relation to the oropharynx. I'll explain. Uh, the, what you do is, we have to make the patient sit at your level. So, if you are sitting in a chair, the patient has to also, also sit in a chair. And you have to uh, ask the patient to open the mouth as much as possible and put their tongue out like this. So, if after uh, after the patient, is, the patient has opened their mouth and put the tongue out, uh, you have to assess the scoring we'll come to this later um, <coughs> sorry um, so we'll see the score so once the patient has been opening their mouth um, so you will be able to see all these things that is the tonsillar pillars will be seen clearly and uh, the hard palate will be seen soft palate will be seen uvula the entire uvula will be seen and the posterior part of the pharynx will be seen so this is malambati 1 this means tongue is small and you will be able to see the posterior pharynx. So the tongue won't obstruct your view for intubation. So this is an, uh, this is not a difficult airway. So class 2, uh, the tonsillar pillars won't be visible. Hot palate will be visible, soft palate will be visible, uvula, base of the uvula will be visible and tip oh, you won't be able to see. And posterior pharynx also, it's uh, very marginally seen. This is class 2. Class 3 is so this is class 3 malambati in which uh, the hot palate will be seen, soft palate will be seen, only the base of the uvula will be seen. No tonsillar pillars, no posterior pharynx and uh, here in uh, class 4 malambati only so hot, uh, not a, only hot palate will be seen. Here uh, only soft palate, here only the base of the uvula will be seen, here only hot palate uh, will be seen. So this is class 4 malambati. So Malambati, uh, it was, a, I need to tell you something about Malambati. So he is an Indian anesthesiologist. So people are fond of asking this Malambati MCQ in, uh, in need PG. So he was born in Hyderabad and he did his anesthesia practice in uh, UK. And uh, he, he discovered from a woman that uh, the size of the tongue has some relation with intubation. So he discovered that the larger tongue means difficult airway. So he uh, he devised this Malambati scoring. Initially, his Malambati scoring had only three stages, uh, that is three classes, which was later modified by Samsung and Young. I have given in this PPT in the first slide. Samsung and Young modified the Malambati scoring, and uh, it has four class uh, four classes. Currently, we are using modified Malambati grading, and uh, that is what I explained in these two pictures. So again, this is the same picture of Malambati scoring in a different different light. Now uh, the other scoring. That is Cormac and Lehan scoring. So this is this is also one other intubation uh, scoring. But this we do after putting the scope in. So once you put the uh, put the scope inside and when you see the glottis, so from that itself you can derive uh, whether it, it can be you will be able to intubate or not. So that score is Cormac Lehan. 
So uh, this core uh, was de uh, devised in 1984. Later it was modified by Entis, and uh, I'll show you the uh, uh, scoring system. So this is the laryngoscopic view, and uh, if you are able to see, this is the laryngoscopic blade. This is what I talked about. This tip, this tip is here. So you put the tip into the valley claw and you lift. So this is tongue, and the entire glottis is visible. So the epiglottis. anterior commissure posterior commissure the entire glottis is visible so in the posterior commissure you can see clearly the three uh, arytenoids corniculate and cuneiform uh, cartilages of the larynx so this is grade 1 which is very easy intubation now grade 2 is uh, uh, so grade 2 you will be able to see only the posterior part of the po po posterior part of the glottis in grade 3 you will be able to see only the epiglottis in grade 4 you will be you won't be able to see even epiglottis so this is the original cormac lehan scoring but uh, it has been modified by entis and now it has uh, 2a 2b 3a and 3b 3b i'll explain later so in grade 1 the same whatever the original cormac lehan that is grade 1 grade 2 it is divided into two parts so grade 2 if only the posterior uh, glottis is visible that is grade 2a if not even the posterior glottis is visible only the arytenoids the tip of the arytenoids and corniculate are visible that is grade 2b grade 3 is only the epiglottis is visible if the epiglottis is liftable that is when you lift the tongue if the epiglottis lift like this that means that is 3a even after lifting the tongue the epiglottis is still like this it is not giving any view of the glottis that means it is grade 3b grade 4 it is the same that is nothing is visible so this is the actual view of the laryngoscope so this is taken from a video laryngoscope so while intubating itself there will be a camera inside the laryngoscope which will record and uh, you can see directly what is happening so this is grade 1 the entire glottis is visible grade 2 the anterior posterior commissure this is grade 2ab uh, 2a and uh, here only the tip of the arytenoids is visible 2b 3a only epiglottis is visible 3 4 there is nothing is visible there is grade 4 grade 4 is very difficult intubation and uh, handling a grade 4 uh, cormac lehan grading alone is really stressful uh, so you need to be prepared whether the patient will have difficult airway and you should always have backup plans now coming out to difficult mask ventilation this uh, question has also been asked in the previous years mcqs so uh, first definition difficult uh, difficulty for single anesthetist to maintain the saturation more than 90 percentage so in mask bag and mask ventilation in class you will know what is what is mask ventilation that is we keep a mask over the patient's face and we try to ventilate so the scoring here is obese so it is easy to remember o for obese that is bmi more than 26 kg b for bearded patient obviously when there is beard you won't be able to mask ventilate properly elderly elderly this buccal pad of fat will be absent and they will have a buck tooth uh, like appearance and the the mask won't fit properly so air will be leaking outside so that is uh, elderly and snorers in snoring patient uh, while after anesthet anesthetizing the lower airway that is the i'm sorry the, the upper airway will collapse on itself the muscles in the neck will be very thick and it will collapse and the airway passage will be obstructed so it is very difficult to open the airway after after uh, in snorers and edentulous edentulous again same elderly like uh, when there is no teeth the face becomes very uh, uh, fragile and it is difficult to ventilate now coming on to scoring systems so after uh, like i've seen in some few aims mcq papers that uh, they have asked this scoring uh, the, they are asking us this scoring systems so they devise some scores like lemon score this is one example lemon score is one example uh, in which uh, you take multiple aspects of the uh, airway examination and you devise a score so if this score is more than this or less than this then it becomes a difficult airway that is what they say so the question was lemon score is used to uh, diagnose answer is difficult airway uh, so you don't need to remember all these things but it is better to know what it is so l for look externally so you have to see whether the patient has a normal face and neck because abnormal faces or any uh, sunken cheeks sudden shoulders all these things indicate difficult airway and no face or neck pathology so look externally evaluate 3 3 2 1 so this is nothing but the three finger to uh, three finger two finger and one finger like that so the mouth opening should be more than three finger high head uh, and chin distance should be more than three finger thyromental distance should be more than three finger and uh, lower jaw anterior subluxation that is uh, the patient should be able to flex the uh, uh, sub that is uh, uh, sub extend the lower jaw more than one finger then malambati scoring it should be either one or two 
and obstruction if there is any upper airway obstruction or any tumor in the mouth or any uh, uh, tumor in the trachea all those things you have to see then finally neck mobility so this is lemon scoring